Well, hello everybody and welcome to tonight's video, the third in the Winter uh, Beauty and Sound Organ Festival. Tonight's video, actually, um, I'm able to take a little bit of a back seat because I'm handing over um, the performance of tonight's organ music to our younger generation, a generation younger than me. <laughs> um, we have seven very talented um, organists from around the world tonight, um, here in England, uh, Germany, uh, Lithuania, and in America, <clears throat> aging from 12 up to 23, I think. Let's get on with it. Let's make a start straight away with Sam Sleeth. Sam has been um, a member of our community now for a long time. I think I, I remember seeing Sam's name in the chat for as long as I can remember doing these live virtual churches and stuff. Sam is a very talented um, organ sampler as well as an organist. Uh, so he goes around sampling organs. Uh, so in the future you may have an Hauptwerk organ by Sam Sleeth. But today he's going to play two pieces for us. He's going to play a piece by uh, Belia, a Toccata in D minor, which I don't play, and then uh, Nun Ruin Alivalda by Bach, BWV 756. All of the pieces tonight, by the way, are introduced uh, by the organists themselves, so I won't be saying too much. You may be pleased to hear. So with that, I will hand over to Sam to, um, to start off with a really quite rousing Toccata in D minor. Hi, my name is Sam Sleeve and I'm 16 years old. Today I'm going to be playing Gaston Bellier's Toccata in D minor on the organ at St. Peter and St. Paul in Bromley and also Johann Sebastian Bach's Nad Ruhen a la Valda on the George England organ at Christ Chapel Dulwich.
Press wrong button there. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, well, what a wonderful way to open um, the recital there. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Sam, for your um, <clears throat> remarkably clean playing. I've just made a couple of notes here, actually, as you were playing that. Um, uh, uh, one of the things that says here is how clean um, your performance, particularly of the Toccata, uh, was. I don't play that Toccata, but I could uh, hear that there are lots of semiquavers and lots of notes that could potentially go wrong, um, and, you, and they didn't. And the, um, the rhythm was very good. It had an excellent sense of uh, drive and direction in the right direction. Um, and of course, with it being you, you're um, an, an excellent sound engineer um, and the, the, uh, the way you recorded and captured the organ was, um, as you'd expect, really, really good. What also impressed me was that um, it was from memory. Um, the, the, the Toccata was from memory. I'd, I was actually earlier today, funny enough, playing something, just trying to um, set up another organ. Um, and I played something from memory and I couldn't play um, I could only play the last page from memory, bizarrely the last page. Um, but I'm very impressed that you managed to do that. Martin Baker, by the way, tomorrow plays uh, two pieces uh, from memory. So you can do something that I can't do. So well done. That was um, um, a really good way to open the, um, the recital. I would say this, it's a real honour, actually. Uh, Sam is 16, um, and uh, actually Sam is the second youngest in the, um, in the concert tonight. It's a real privilege and an honour for me to be sharing the organ bench, as it were, um, with such um, uh, enthusiastic and talented uh, people. So these young guys um, were very um, eager, you know, in, in, the, uh, in the way they were communicating with me on email. Um, it's, it's very clear that, that there is a, a passion, um, a passion there, which I think is so important. Let's go over to Lithuania to hear uh, Benas um, Monte Zavicius uh, play two pieces, um, uh, one by Bach, Ibarmadik O'Hergot, gorgeous, gorgeous piece, um, and one by Brahms, Mein Jesu Dermu, uh, Der Du Mich, sorry. Um, now, for the previous um, Joint Junior Organ Recital, you may remember um, Benas played, um, f he was, <laughs> he said to me, I asked, I asked everyone for that occasion, and he said that he was at the seaside. <laughs> and so he had one keyboard and he was at the seaside. He has rather more than one keyboard now, and Benas has a, um, an awesome setup. Um, but anyway, I will hand over to Benas um, now to play these pieces. Bach and Brahms. Greetings from Lithuania, everyone. Uh, it's a great pleasure to be here in this year's Beauty in Sound Winter Festival. I am Benas Matuzavichus and uh, I'm 20 years old. Today I will play two pieces for you. So one of them is Erbarm dich or Herr Gott by Johannes. Uh, by Johann Sebastian Bach, uh, and the other one is Mein Jesu Tell Du Mich by Johannes Brahms. I really do hope you enjoy and see you at the console.
Very well done, uh, Benass, indeed. And apologies, I hadn't quite realised you'd gone back to the beginning, midway through the bark. Um, you know, it's making a making a, a fluff or a mistake when um, performing music is entirely normal, entirely natural, and uh, common ground for the greatest of organists. I'll tell you a little, a little anecdote, um, a very, very short one indeed. Um, so this week I've had a rather um, a renowned, um, let's say a rather talented organist sat here. Um, and uh, no, it wasn't Hugo. <laughs> It was um, it was Martin Martin Baker whose whose recital you'll hear tomorrow night, and the recital itself uh, was uh, was just astonishingly good, astonishingly good. Um, and he uh, played he pl he recorded everything in in, in order, so Bach, uh, Schwelink, uh, Vidor, and then an improvisation. But what um, I haven't shown on the recital. Uh, the recording is that in the uh, Vidor, um, he had to, or he chose, I don't think he had to at all, because the first performance was amazing. But he wanted to uh, re-record the uh, last movement, which basically is really long. It's like got different, uh, four different tempo uh, markings in it. It's very challenging in places. And there was one bit where he um, obviously wasn't very happy with it. Um, and I thought, okay, I've heard a little slip there, but you know, it's live. Um, we were recording it live, basically. Doesn't matter, but no, he was. He wanted to do it again. <laughs> so look, if people like Martin Baker, who are the best in the world, um, make mistakes, it can happen to anyone. And look, I've made loads of mistakes. You, you've heard me play on a Sunday afternoon, haven't you? <laughs> um, warts and all. So Benas, don't worry. If you if you make a, a mistake, the important thing is just to keep going. That is so important. And that is what makes a really good musician, actually. The ability to um, get out of that mistake and just uh, keep going. Regardless, excellent um, uh, stuff. I really like your setup. I really like your, your, the way you've got those three keyboards mounted and a, 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 a sort of a standard music desk for the, um, a music stand for the, for the music desk. And we, we, were you sitting on hymn books or, or, or something? <laughs> Do you know what, if I was, um, if I was like 13, 14, 15 again, that's exactly what I would do. I would build my own organ like that. With help work now, uh, anything is uh, possible. So Benas, thank you very much. I really, really appreciate um, your contribution. Excellent stuff. Were you at the beach for that recording? Let me know in the chat. <laughs> now, we're going to head over to um, um, America now for our youngest participant tonight, Stone Alvarado, who's going to play a piece by uh, Claude Balbastre. It's Con Jesus Naki a Noel, which basically means uh, when Jesus was born at Christmas. Now talking about uh, Benas, uh, his organ setup, um, you just wait until you see Stone's organ setup. It is amazing. It puts this to shame. Um, and I'm really, really impressed. Uh, not only by the setup, but also uh, Stone plays this uh, piece by Baldassara from memory. So, Stone, I'll hand over to you to, um, well, play this wonderful piece. Hello, my name is Don Alvarado, and I'll, today I'll be playing, sorry if I pronounced this wrong, Claude Baldassare's Juan Jesus Naque a Noel on the virtual health work organ of Saint Cecile Cathedral de Albi by Organa Regine Kaeli. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong too. And this organ is just a French Baroque organ.
Well, as I think as you've all uh, noticed, it was a very, very authentic French sounding organ that, a very Baroque uh, sounding uh, uh, organ. How wonderful um, stone. That was really, really good. I really enjoyed that. Um, I really enjoyed that you're just, you were really throwing yourself into the music. And that is what uh, being a musician is all about, really getting involved um, with the music, going with it. I really liked watching, uh, watching you play because you were just so um, absorbed in what was going on. Um, thank you very much. I think um, Stone wins today for the most uh, flamboyant and decorative um, organ console, don't you think? Uh, and also the fact that um, my little Lottie here um, feels rather um, it, um, inferior compared to Stone's pig. <laughs> Don't worry, don't worry, we love you. <laughs> so Stone, um, as, as per the last uh, festival, thank you very much for submitting and I look forward to um, seeing more of you play uh, in the future. By the way guys, if you haven't yet already, please do download the um, festival programme. I have it right here. I'm actually um, using it for, for notes. Lots of information about all of the um, uh, events on the Organ Festival and of course more information um, about this uh, beast behind me about some of the technical aspects of it so go and get it downloaded it's free it's a PDF and it's free festival programs are not normally free but this one is <laughs> so we've been here in the UK we've been to Lithuania we've been over to America and we're actually going to come back into Germany now uh, for uh, a, a few pieces by an organist who, who doesn't really need uh, an introduction at all. Paul Fai is, um, has got quite a name for himself already. He's um, well over 3,000 subscribers on YouTube, um, and rightly so. He deserves a lot more. You should all go and click subscribe to Paul. He's a very, very talented young organist indeed who plays, who really plays from the soul. He plays... Um, so musically, last, the last time we did one of these festivals, he submitted a performance of um, the D major prelude and fugue by Bach 532, and it was wonderful. It was so musical. Uh, I was really, really impressed. Paul is uh, also a, um, a prolific composer, um, and he's put a lot of um, uh, his own compositions on his own YouTube channel, so go and check it out. So what's Paul gonna play today? Well, that's a very good question. Uh, but, <laughs> Paul is German, so and he lives in Leipzig. Um, lucky you, I haven't even been to Leipzig yet. That's just outrageous, isn't it? Need to go to Leipzig very, very soon. Road trip, I think. He's going to play the first movement of the Concerto in G Major, uh, BWV 592. He's then going to play uh, Comte de Nun, uh, BWV 650. And then another piece by uh, Claude Balbastre, um, To Le Bourgeois de Chartres, um, another Noel. So you'll hear two pieces by Balbastre tonight. Enough from me, let's listen to the very talented um, Paul Fay. Hi, my name is Paul Fay. I'm 23 years old and I live in Leipzig, Germany. And now you will hear the Concerto in Giedwur by Johann Sebastian Bach played on my Hauptwerkorgel.
it's me again. You will hear another piece by Johann Sebastian Bach, which is from his Schüberchorele, and it's called Kommst du nun Jesu vom Himmel herunter auf Erden?
Well, as you can see, Paul is a very talented young organist indeed, and um, particularly uh, evident in the Bach, I think, with such natural um, music uh, musicianship of those, um, of those phrases and cadences uh, with such control. Um, Paul, it's, so, it's such a joy to hear you play, and um, I would be honoured if you um, did something else for the channel in the future. Um, it's just, we should all go over to Leipzig uh, to hear you play live, I think, because uh, Bach quite clearly runs through your veins. <laughs> As you will notice, uh, Paul's socks during the second piece by Bach. Very Christmassy indeed. I like I like those Christmas socks. I'm a fan of socks, as you know. Um, I like to mix it up. Um, uh, go between shoes and socks. Tomorrow night's organist also wears socks. So the best of us wear socks. I think we should start a revolution to um, play the organ in socks. <laughs> I am kidding. Shoes are very very important. Anyway, oh, I also noticed, has anyone noticed how, um, how tidy Paul's room always is? It's always immaculate, and every single video I've ever watched of Paul's, it's always so, so tidy. If you could see this room right now, whew, you'd run a mile. <laughs> um, anyway, let's, let's go on, uh, let's go on. Um, let's go back over to America to, to hear a little bit of Andy Brown. There he is. Andy, you are in the chat. I was just about to say, are you in the chat? You are there. Now, Andy's going to play one of the, the absolute hallmarks of the organ um, repertory. It's uh, César Franck, his, number, uh, his third chorale in A minor. Such a powerful piece. These chorales uh, are either the, the, the last piece he wrote or one of the last pieces that he wrote. Um, he wrote them when he was actually rather unwell, uh, um, having just suffered a, a traffic accident, actually, in the 19th century, before cars. He was obviously on a horse and carriage or something, but he had a road accident and it actually um, left him very, very poorly. Uh, and César Franck wrote these pieces, I think, knowing that he was, um, his days were numbered. Um, which is why they're so powerful and so um, full of uh, passion, I suppose. So I'm going to hand over to Andy now, uh, Andy, to play this wonderful, wonderful piece, um, one of my favourites. Um, so nothing more to say from me apart from Andy. Take it away. Hello everyone, my name is Andy Brown, uh, I am 19 years old, and today I will be playing for you the third chorale in a minor by César Franck. Uh, and the organ that I will be recording on is my own Hopfrick setup, um, and I will be using the Urakami sample set by Inspired Acoustics. Thank you. 
and one of my favourite endings of any organ piece. When the left foot goes all the way down into that bottom D. And then you have a D minor chord with the, um, the raised sixth, a plagal cadence into A major. So powerful, so effective, isn't it? Um, that last section always used to call, and still does actually, uh, in, in, in part, uh, caused me grief. So, Andy, you're playing really, um, you, the annoying thing about you, Andy, is you make everything look so easy. Like when you played the Vidor um, for the last kind of, um, festival, you made it look so easy, and it's not. <laughs> Just sit there and just do it. That is, um, that's a talent in itself. If you can make hard music like that look um, so easy, then immediately you are doing the right things uh, technically. If you're, you know, if you're tense and making it look very hard, things aren't going in your favour. Um, but you're making it look very straightforward. And I also liked um, your sense of legato phrase. Obviously, the French school of organ music um, is, it, it, I think, above all other schools. Um, it's so important that um, the music is played, uh, played in a legato way, particularly with uh, in César Franck. Um, he was a great um, ambassador, I suppose, for legato playing. And even though it, it, it wouldn't be written in the score, if you had um, like, for example, I don't know, um, there's a ladybird on the organ. <laughs> an, F, an F major chord, so an F, A and a C, and then the next chord um, would be, let's say, an A minor chord, uh, A, C and E. Um, so only one note basically is changing. Um, you know, the bottom F becomes a top E, right? What you would potentially do in those two chords, if it was in a phrase, it, moving forwards, you would, to keep that legato sense, you would actually sustain those, those two, the A and the C, and then only play the E. Um, it's, it's a bit of a, um, it's a, it's a, I suppose, a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A technique, a French technique. That's not, not the right words there, but it's how you uh, get those legato um, um, phrases. Legato. <laughs> Words are not my tool tonight. Um, but well done, Andy. You were able to do that. So that was um, fantastic. I wonder what you'll play next. Are you going to play the, um, the, the Ad Nos by Franz Liszt or the Reubke 94th Psalm? I can imagine, given that you are only 18, you're playing these big pieces already. I first learned that in 2000 and I was at York. Um, in my second year at York, uh, 2008, it would have been the summer of 2008, and I remember playing it in 2008 because we played. I played it in a um, in a concert, a choir concert actually, and I was given an organ solo, um, and I played that in front of. It, it was in the nave at York, <laughs> up there. That's the choir, uh, but it was on the other side of the organ, uh, the packed nave. A choir had just sung there bits and I uh, then had to play that César Franck um, and it was just the most, most exciting piece. Um, I just, um, I love playing it. So anyway, I'm waffling. Basically you've got me excited by <laughs> your playing of that César Franck. Good stuff uh, Andy, thank you very much. Now we're going to stay in America for another piece um, um, played by Stanley Heap and I'm just wondering whether Stanley is in the chat. I've not seen unless Stanley has um, uh, an online username. I've not seen Stanley. If you are in, um, give me a shout, Stanley. It would be good to hear, hear from you. Uh, Stanley has recorded a piece by Richard Elliott called Let Earth Receive Her King. Now, this is actually one of the only pieces uh, into the programme tonight that I wasn't aware of. I've not heard of Richard Elliott, um, but this piece, um, Let Earth Receive Her King, um, hi Stanley, yes you are in, good, good to have you with us. Um, I was just saying that I've not, I don't know this piece um, and it's, it's a rather um, uplifting, uh, I suppose, ditty or fanfare for Christmas. It has one or two uh, tunes in it so that you will all recognise. Uh, in fact, we should all count, we should, we, I don't know how many pieces are in this piece, how many tunes are in this piece, but let's count them, see if we can come to the same number at the end. 
So, Stanley is going to introduce and then play um, Richard Elliott's uh, Let Earth Receive Her King. Stanley, by the way, uh, as with Andy, um, is 18 years old. So Stanley, go for it. Hi, I'm Stanley Heap. I'm 18 years old, and I'm going to be playing Let Earth Receive Her King by Richard Elliott using the Frysock sample set um, from Frysock, Austria. Wow, isn't that really cool? I might have to get a score of that. It's rather, rather fun. I must admit, I lost count <laughs> very early on. I got to two and then I, I then lost it. <laughs> so did anyone get more than me? <laughs> How many pieces are in that um, um, combina um, compilation of um, organ? There's lots, lots of Messiah, I heard. Uh, and other stuff. Joy to the world. <laughs> Excellent. I really enjoyed that. Um, apparently Richard Elliott is a, a well-known organist over in America. Well, um, I, I, I eat my words. Um, I, I really should look him up. Um, Stanley, thank you very much for that. Uh, that was terrific. Um, yes. Someone asked me earlier if, if I had the, uh, the organ sample um, Ulsrech. I don't have it, no. I wonder what, why did you ask that? I, I was, I've been wondering whether I should get that organ sample, but I just haven't got it yet. So Stanley, if you want, if you, uh, keep in touch and um, I'd, I, I look forward to hearing more from you in the future. Um, and uh, please do um, get involved with the future joint junior organ recitals. You should all, I don't know whether how many of these how, how many of these guys have organ uh, organ YouTube channels. I know obviously Paul does. Uh, I think Sam Sleeth does. Uh, Andy Brown has one as well. Stanley, I don't know whether you do or not. Um, and our next organist, I'm not sure either. 
it's well worth um, searching their names on YouTube to make sure they have got one. If they have, make sure you subscribe to them so you can follow their progress. I certainly will be doing that. We're actually going to head on to our final performer tonight, uh, Ed Gort. Uh, are you with us, Ed? Please do uh, give me a shout out if you are with us. Another 18 year old um, here in the UK. Now, Ed is actually going to play, uh, yes, Andy, yes, subscribe to us. <laughs> you tell them, Andy. Uh, Ed is actually going to play um, two pieces, um, two pieces which I know very well, and they are contrasting and uh, entirely appropriate for Christmas. Hello, as you are with us. Good to have you with us. Um, the first is Wackit auf Ruft uns die Stimme, which you'll all know, um, of course, Wake Up, Wake Up, Tidings, Thrilling, uh, which comes from, uh, actually comes from his um, cantata on the same name, which is gorgeous, a really, really wonderful uh, cantata indeed. BWV 645, and then we're going to go into a little cheeky number called Sleigh Ride. And this has been arranged by um, a concert organist here in England called Thomas Trotter. Thomas Trotter is a, uh, a wonderful, wonderful uh, organist, a uh, concert organist. He uh, was organist at King's College Cambridge uh, in his youth uh, before uh, going freelance, basically. So, and he's, he's arranged um, a piece, which is actually rather fun. I'm gonna hand over to Ed. Um, for these two pieces, very contrasting pieces, um, and then I will catch you on the other side. So Ed, over to you. Hi, I'm Ed Gort, I'm 18, and today I'm going to play for you two pieces. The first is J.S. Bach's chorale prelude on Wackert Alf Rufsens die Stimme. This initially formed part of his cantata on the chorale, but the version I'll play for you today is the well-known uh, organ transcription of the chorale prelude, which forms part of his Schubler chorales. The second piece I'm going to play for you is Thomas Trotter's arrangement of Leroy Anderson's Sleigh Ride. I'll be playing both of these pieces on my home organ running Hauptwerk, and the sample set I'm going to be using is that of uh, St. Bartholomew's Armley, uh, a famous organ built by Edmund Schulze. I hope you enjoy it.
excellent stuff, Ed. That was really, really, really amazing. Um, and I think that was just a perfect way to, uh, to draw a close to the music uh, this evening. Um, what I've been really amazed uh, by today is not only the, um, the playing um, and um, talent that is quite clearly uh, evident in all of our performers tonight, but actually the, um, the, the custom built and custom made Hauptwerk organs. We've seen a lot of uh, organs uh, tonight. We've seen pipe organs, we've seen sort of re repurposed old digital instruments and we've seen completely um, self-made instruments. So Ben Ass had his on, um, on, 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 a, on a mount, on a rack. Um, Stone had wonderful tinsel uh, on a table. Um, and we've just seen uh, Ed's organ there, which he apparently bought those keyboards on eBay and um, made it himself. You know, when I was, um, when I was 18, a few years ago, um, Hamburg didn't exist, um, and I, I could have bought keyboards. I could have bought Casio keyboards, but I wouldn't have. have I wouldn't have had a Hamburg software um, to plug them into to find that really awesome sound that we can today so easily. I think um, the ability to build organs ourselves at home with actually r relatively cheaply um, um, and having an access to software like Hamburg is really quite revolutionary. Um, and it makes me feel uh, relieved. When I was a cathedral organist, um, um, when I was early, in the early, say, let's just say, 90, uh, 2010, 2009, 2008 sort of time, I remember people saying, you know, well-known organists, um, generations above me, saying they're really concerned about the future of organists because there are not so many organists coming through. And I, I always used to shake my head think, oh, yeah, I know what you mean, there other aren't, are they? But I'm sitting here now in 2021, about to go into 2022, and I've completely changed my mind. I'd like to go back now and uh, say to those people who are, who are doubting the future of the organ world, I'd like to say, look, have you seen these people around the world playing? Have you seen how enthusiastic and how passionate they are about the organ? Have you seen the organs they have at home? These people are building organs. They love the music so much that they're building their own organ. I do think the organ uh, has a great future and I will do all I can to help encourage uh, and help the people, um, such people like you've heard tonight. So, I will once again remind uh, you to go and download the festival program. It's got a bit of information in here um, about all of the events. It's got program listings um, and other little sort of behind the scenes new information that, in, that may be interesting to you. Tomorrow night we have this wonderful organ recital by Martin Baker who sits right here, faces towards the organ and plays um, some music that you, I think you will all find really, really inspirational. He plays the Bach Passacaglia in C minor, um, from memory. He plays the Schwelink um, Mein Junger's Liebenhattein End, from memory. And then he plays a complete performance of the uh, Ninth Organ Symphony by Charles-Marie Vidor. It's known as the Gothique Symphony. And it's based on Christmas plain song. And I didn't, I didn't know this piece really until, um, until listening to Martin play it and then having to edit the recital. And, and I've listened to it a few times now and I, boy, you're in for a real treat. It's a, such a stunning piece. There's a, um, towards the very end of the, of the organ uh, symphony, there is a monumental crescendo um, all the way up to a big C major chord and the organist will know the lowest note on the pedal board is bottom C. And with all the pedal reeds and everything blaring away, it just incredible. And then it's, there's a, a decrescendo, otherwise known as a diminuendo, um, and it actually ends rather, um, it sort of floats off into the distance. And it really is just amazing. Really, really, really amazing. And then he improvises on Christmas tunes um, on a, 
in a rather Martin Baker style. So I really recommend you tune in tomorrow night. It's the same time as tonight, that's nine o'clock. So actually we're going a bit later um, just to keep the continuity and the consistency of the times of all events uh, in the uh, festival at the same. Thank you once again to all of our performers tonight. Uh, we had um, Sam Sleeth, let me just make sure that I'm not gonna miss anyone out. Sam Sleeth, um, Ben Az, Stone, Paul, Andy, Stanley, and Ed. Thank you guys for your uh, playing, your recording, and for just being so enthusiastic to get involved with the project. Until tomorrow, um, I will say a cheerio to you all. Thank you for tuning in. And if I don't see you before Christmas, <laughs> have a happy Christmas. But I'll see you tomorrow, though. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. Take care and stay safe. Goodbye.